Good morning and welcome everyone to another online uh, digital worship service. This one is for the second Sunday of Easter for April 11, 2021. Uh, I am delighted to share this time with each of you. We have again created our sacred space. I invite you to do the same and then we'll take a moment, center our hearts for worship and then we will begin. Welcome everyone. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 133. How good and how pleasant it is with kindred, when kindred live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head, flowing down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, flowing down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon, flowing down upon the hills of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. A reading from 1 John. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed, and we have seen it and testified to it, and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we are walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus his Son cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Word of God, word of life. Join me in the gospel acclamation. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Halle, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. 
When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you, are, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Here we are on the second Sunday of Easter and we have this familiar story of Doubting Thomas. It comes every year on the second Sunday of Easter and this disciple is beloved by all of us because he is someone to whom we can relate. Thomas, the incredulous non-believer who resists the easy answers to the hard questions of faith. The one who wants proof. Who doesn't relate to that? And in each age, we Christians have put a different theological spin on why Thomas doubts in the first place. In the early church, doubters questioned whether God, as eternal and divine, could die and still be God. And Thomas bore the weight of those Trinitarian uh, debates. Later, medieval scholastics depicted his doubt as logical, putting in his mouth the question, is resurrection metaphysically and analytically understandable? For the mystically oriented, doubt is described as the dark night of the soul, where in the midst of unbelief, belief germinates in the shadows. And more recently, theologians from the Enlightenment period used rational, empirical arguments to provide the narrative for Thomas's doubts. These scholars asked, who has actually seen the dead arise? Meaning that they turned the resurrection Christ into a symbol of an existential fondness for the future. And even today, most people want to focus on Thomas because his doubt reflects our own struggles with faith and belief. But for this week's uh, lesson, I am looking at the story with a different direction in mind. The real point to this gospel narrative is not about who Thomas is. Instead, this story reveals who Jesus is, a Savior coming to us wherever we might be. First, let's look at the door we see at the beginning of this story. Instead of depicting Jesus, in, instead of depicting a Jesus who just opens it, walks right up to Thomas, and then starts to argue with him, trying to answer his rationalist queries and assuage his empirical worries, John's Gospel paints a starkly different picture that tells us much about the unique character of resurrection faith and its relation to doubt. One commentary reveals why this is so important, saying, John tells us first that Jesus walks through a closed, locked door to get to Thomas. It's not that Thomas's doubt drives him to demand answers from Jesus. It is Jesus who is determined to reach this stalwart skeptic whom no one else seems able to convince. It is Jesus who refuses to let dead bolts or chains block the movement of love towards the one who lacks faith. So too it is for us. 
When doubt crowds out hope, we can be confident that Jesus will come to meet us where we are, even if it's out on the far edge of faith that has forgotten how to believe. When doubt crowds out hope, God doesn't leave us behind the locked doors that hardship has built in front of us. No, God comes seeking us without question, stepping beyond that threshold of doubt, offering love and grace to wounded and fearful hearts. Not because we demand it, but because grace is already ours through Christ. Another point to grasp in this story is that even though Jesus walks through that locked door and right up to Thomas, Thomas is still not sure who Jesus is. It's not like there's some point in the story where Thomas suddenly has this epiphany as soon as Jesus is standing in front of him, even though it's likely that Jesus still looks the same as he did before his death. This fact is a word of comfort for us because it confirms that when Jesus comes to find us in our doubt-filled wanderings, we, like Thomas, may not recognize him either. As one theologian puts it, how are we to know when God arrives if, in our doubt, our capacity for seeing God is sure to fail? John gives an answer to this question that brings us to the heart of faith's peculiar form of knowing. Jesus offers two clues to Thomas about his identity. He speaks the simple words, peace be with you, and then asks his doubtful friend to put his doubtful fingers into the wounds that he, Jesus, bears from the nails and the swords that destroyed his body only days before. What does this tell us about faith? When God comes, we will recognize God's presence in those moments when peace is offered, in those moments when life's brutal violence is honestly acknowledged and when, in the midst of this bracing honesty, we realize that we are not alone, but have, in fact, been always already found. And isn't that good news for us? That even when we cannot fully recognize Jesus because of our doubts and fear, we can be assured that he will still come to us no matter where we are. One moment, he may come dressed in golden garb, calling us to celebrate joyously the richness of spirit that faith promises. The next, however, he may come wearing beggar's rags, reminding us that the love which saves is vulnerable and costly, and that the glory which awaits us is humble in texture and well-worn in feel. At still other times, he may come to us wrapped in the wool shawl of the wise old grandmother who simply holds us as we weep. Whatever his appearance may be, though, we will know it is Jesus if inside those golden garbs, street faded rags, or a warm knitted shawl, we find not a logically argued response to our questioning faith, but a surprising proclamation of peace and touching love that is stronger than even violent death itself. In the wonder of those wounds, he finds us. In the midst of those scars, we are healed. Amen.
We confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, Father, all, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. He was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. On this second Sunday of Easter, let us pray for all in need, responding to each petition with the words, Send us your peace, O God. O faithful God, grant the joy of your peace to our pastors, to all who minister among us, and to all the baptized, especially during times of hardship. Help us to support one another's churches, to cease rivalries, and to strengthen our ecumenical contacts. Hear our prayers for the church. Send us your peace, O God. Grant the beauty of your peace to all of nature, its springtime flowers, its wildlife, its terrains. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and save lands that have been misused. Inspire us to care for the whole of your creation. Hear our prayers for the earth. Send us your peace, O God. Grant the power of your peace to the nations of the world. Halt all impulses toward violence between nations in our city streets and inside our homes. Lead our government into wise decisions concerning migrants, especially the youths. Bring an end to ethnic prejudices in our land and guide judges and juries to enact justice throughout each court proceeding. Hear our prayers for this country. Send us your peace, O God. Grant the abundance of your peace to all agencies of care in church and government. Show us the best ways to uphold and support those in need. Inspire children to share. Open our hearts to a world so filled with suffering and make us always more generous with the gifts you have given us. Hear our prayers for a world of goodwill. Send us your peace, O God. Grant the well-being of your peace to all who suffer. Visit all who are ill, especially those suffering from COVID-19, those, those without access to vaccines, and those with strained medical resources. Comfort with your merciful presence those who are distanced from family and friends and all who are lonely or distressed. Receive our prayers especially for all of those on our prayer list and those we name in aloud now or in the silence of our hearts. Hear our prayers for the sick and those in need. Send us your peace, O God. Grant each of us the hope that comes with your peace. Comfort each of us in sorrow and receive our silent requests. Hear us as we pray for ourselves. Send us your peace, O God. We praise you for embracing your people with the wounded arms of Christ, and we bless you for all who died in the faith. At the end of all things, bring us with them into your everlasting peace. Hear our prayers for life beyond our understanding. Send us your peace, O God. 
In praise for the new life you grant us in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. I invite you to share the peace with one another who are sharing worship with you, and I send my peace to you as well. Peace be with you. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. Risen Christ, living word, you are the bread of life that nourishes and sustains us. By the power of your word, dwell in our hearts and reveal to us again that we are the body of Christ in our vulnerable flesh, through our baptism into your death and resurrection, and in service to the world you love. Be for us manna in the wilderness. Open us to recognize you in every meal and in all who hunger for bread, for human touch, and for healing and hope. We pray in your name, our healer and companion. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, again, I say good morning to all of you, and it's lovely to see all of you like this. Um, we don't have very many announcements. It was great. I will say we had nearly 40 people show up at the church for our brief Holy Communion service in special circumstances on Easter Sunday. I thought it was a, a wonderful turnout. There were some pictures we posted on Facebook. We did the appropriate social distancing. It was a lovely uh, spring morning. So um, for all of you who came and participated, I am blessed to have shared that with you. And we will be looking into doing something like that again uh, in the near future. Uh, that's probably the only announcement. We are continuing uh, with our uh, spring cleaning. I think Spec has a message out via email that they are planning something uh, coming up soon, although the date right now uh, escapes me. Maybe I'll put it underneath here where I can uh, let everybody know uh, when we will be having that. So you're welcome to come to the outdoors. It's not indoors, it's the outdoors and spruce up the property and maybe plant a few flowers. Uh, that is that is something we're looking forward to. On April 25th, we will be celebrating uh, All Creation Sunday, uh, which is um, a lovely uh, commemoration that coincides with Earth Day. And there are some special uh, plans for worship that we will be sharing with you next week. Um, and I think those, that's all the announcements. So please uh, receive the blessing. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the risen Christ. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen.
is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.